Okay, that's one of my favorite plums right there. This thing's so beautiful. So well behaved. Hey, I'm filming. Quiet on the set. Uh, so well behaved. I put uh, a bunch of them next to my pool here. I had five, a gopher got one, but uh, the rest of them are thriving. And uh, I used to have a, a little platform mounted in that tree <laughs> where I could climb up and jump off into the water. Uh, then it looked really hokey, so I took it down. So I put another big rock up there, so it gets me most of the way up there. This is a Guadalupe Island fan palm. This is probably the best adapted palm, I think, for the San Francisco Bay Area. And uh, the reason why is it's native to this little rocky island that there's very little information about on the internet. It's been driving me nuts. I've known about this tree since I was like 16, before the internet, and there was nothing about this tree like anywhere in books or anything. But now there's a little bit because of the internet. But very little considering, you know, how big the internet is and how many connections there are on it between people and pictures and stuff. But uh, I always wondered, you know, knowing that this island is a rocky island off of northern Baja, 220 miles southwest of San Diego, knowing what that area would create, thinking, like, how does it get its water? How does it survive? Palms like water. Um, but what I do know is it's really windy out there, and this tree has adapted to, it's very obvious, it's adapted to have a very tough leathery leaf that does not tear. And that's obviously because it's on this exposed island with wind coming off the ocean. Whenever you put palms out, uh, like for instance, king palms, like soft tissue palms, like king palms, like that palm out next to the ocean, they just get tattered to death, it's terrible. But these Guadalupe palms totally stand up to it and look really good. I also noticed the fronds are really, really big, like compared to a Mexican fan palm. And the, um, the heads themselves are wider than a typical Mexican fan palm. I've always had the theory that these palms are kind of designed to capture water. You know, when the rain hits them, the fronds actually funnel water down to the trunk. And I do know that these palms can actually, in fact, all plants can suck up moisture and be hydrated just from contact of water on their tissues. And I think humans, same thing. Like if you soak your whole body in water, you can actually uptake water. Uh, in addition to drinking it, you can uptake it that way. And the plants can uptake water and hydrate themselves, not just through the root action, but also just from, um, you know, soaking the tissues. So when the rain comes down and gets into the trunk, before it even gets to the roots, the palm is being hydrated. hydrated. But uh, I always wondered, uh, you know, how could these palms exist? I think, okay, maybe they're like redwoods where they grow in the north faces where there's less evaporation and the north face of the island. And I've, I, now I can see the island and I can see little dots out there and I think they're palms on Google Earth. And I've been obsessed about this. And I'm looking at it thinking, okay, you know what? It's got to be that the fog is rolling in from the northwest, hitting the island. The palms are all native. All the dots are on the north side of the island that you see on Google Earth. It's got to be that these palms are hitting, all this fog's hitting them. The islands have pretty good elevation. So when clouds go up, they ring themselves out. There's probably a little bit of rain, a little con condensation from the fog. In the summer, so it's summertime. Summertime is a big issue. Wintertime, there's storms, no problem. But, you know, temperatures go up in summertime. It's got to get water somehow in summertime. So all the fog comes in in the summertime. But check this out. I'll show you pictures of the island. A couple on the internet. There's one, these are the best photos I've seen. This is a thing called the herbarium. Oh, I don't know if you can see it. Oh. Anyway, it's, let me see if I can show you the photograph. This is the herbarium.org virtualherbarium.org. I'm not sure who runs this site. There they are. Look how rocky it is out there. Also, notice how there's only big old palms. Well, that's because a, a bunch of goats got loose on the island and they, uh, <laughs> they ended up eating all the baby palms and they finally eradicated all the goats. They're hoping all this vegetation is going to come back, but literally this tree was going extinct in its little tiny habitat, which is a little dot 
in the in the Pacific Ocean. Now look, here's the best photograph I've seen of habitat. And again, uh, there's nothing young there, and just old, old, old plants. And these plants are extremely old. Those ones right here are probably like they could be 400 years old, 200. You know, it's hard to say with palms. Look right in here. Look, there's a real dense stand in there. But uh, all the other photos I've seen, there's only three or four or five out there of the actual palms on the island. And uh, they, uh, this is the most dense stand I've seen. Um, you'll also notice there, there's no babies anywhere. So you can see the palms eventually dying out, going extinct. <laughs> but they finally got rid of the goats, so hopefully they're gonna come back. But here's the interesting thing. And you can see like nothing else grows out there. Maybe because of the goats. But, uh, but also because of where it is. There's just no summer rainfall out there at all. Um, so I just went to the weather station, weather channel, to see, uh, to see if, uh, what the weather's gonna be like, so I can wear shorts or whatever today. And I saw this image here, and it says, atmospheric waves visible in clouds. And I took one look at that island, and I thought, oh my gosh. I think that is Guadalupe Island. We need to go in the shade. And so I clicked on the link and it's so cool. Check this out. I wanted to video this before it went away. Okay, here it is. I'm gonna zoom in on it and I'm gonna show you what this is about. What's interesting is this person doesn't talk anything about um, like this effect creating the most incredible palm we have out here in the West. And, um, and, and the fact that it's, uh, you know, totally endangered and everything else. I should have talked all about this. I don't know why they didn't, but here we go. Listen to this. You gonna play? I thought this was a pretty sweet find on Twitter from my good buddy Dakota Smith at Weather Dak. He's always posting really cool stuff like this. This is Guadalupe Island off the western coast of the Baja Peninsula in Mexico. It's kind of sitting out in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. And what you notice here is you can see all these clouds. That's moving where the palms over the are native to, right here. Northwest to south and east. And instead of just continuing to move over the island, they kind of split apart. And then if you look downstream, you see all these vortices, okay? Here's a little bit of a zoomed in view there. You can see those little kind of curly cues there, and that happens downstream. Those are called von Karman vortices, okay? And this can happen, especially when you have a little uh, island out in the middle of the ocean where there's a lot of terrain. Guadalupe happens to be a volcanic island, so you've got elevation over 4,000 feet in some spots. Uh, not only do you see this in the atmosphere sometimes with clouds, it's almost the same idea as putting a rock in the middle of a stream. The atmosphere behaves a lot like a fluid, so you can get these vortices that form downstream. Pretty cool stuff, isn't it? Okay, so that's the whole video right there. And, um, whoops, well, it's gone now. Huh. I think we're too far away from the internet. But you saw how that worked. You saw how the, um, let's see, yeah, it's all gone, whatever. Anyway, you basically saw all those clouds piling up on the, uh, let me turn this off, on the uh, northwest side of the island. That's where all the weather comes in from. That's where all the fog comes from. Fog gets hung up on the island. And uh, here's my trees again. Gets hung up on the island and uh, the air will rise and it'll wring out whatever moisture there is there. And most importantly, when the fog comes in, it's going to hang up on that side of the island and hit these fronds and drip down the trunks. And that, my friends, is how those palms subsist out there where there's no summer water. Kind of a miracle. So it's basically like a fog island effect is what's keeping those plants alive. And, of course, in the Bay Area here, we have lots of fog, especially on the coast. And so that's why this plant does so well. So Guadalupe fan palm, it's kind of fun to know, like, how these plants survive and uh, how they earn their keep in the real world. Hopefully that island will repopulate with palms all over it over the next 100 years. And, uh, you know, when I freeze myself and come back in 300 years, I can go out there and it'll be a tropical uninterrupted forest of every age plant.